the monster stars that make our sun look pathetic. Let me blow your mind right from the start. You know how we always talk about how massive our sun is? Well, our sun is basically a speck of dust compared to what's actually out there. There's a star called Stevenson, 2-18, that's sitting about 19,000 light years away from us, minding its own business in the constellation Scutum, and this absolute unit is 2,150 times larger than our sun. If you place this monster where our sun is right now, its surface would extend past the orbit of Saturn. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and most of Saturn's orbit would all be inside this thing. You'd literally be living inside a star. Charles Liu, the astrophysicist from the City University of New York, who literally wrote the book One Universe at Home in the Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson, has spent decades studying colliding galaxies and the evolution of stars. When you look at the work he's done mapping cosmic structures with the Hubble Space Telescope through projects like Cosmos, you start to understand just how ridiculously varied stellar sizes can be. Stevenson 2-18 has a volume roughly 10 billion times that of our sun, which contains 99.8% of all the mass in our entire solar system. Here's where it gets weird. The surface temperature is only about 3,200 Kelvin, which sounds hot until you realize that's actually relatively cool for a star. It glows with this eerie red color because of that lower temperature. But don't let that fool you. It's pumping out 436,000 times more light than our sun. This is a red supergiant approaching the end of its life, bloated and luminous, shedding mass at one of the highest rates ever observed. The controversial part? For years, everyone thought UY Scuti was the champion. That star held the record for being the largest known star in the universe, and every space documentary featured it prominently. Then, in 2020, better measurements came in from the Gaia satellite, and astronomers had to revise UY Scuti's size way down from about 1,700 solar radii to just 755 solar radii. That's still massive, but it knocked UY Scuti off its throne. Stevenson 218 swooped in and claimed the crown. And here's the thing that bothers some astrophysicists. Stellar evolutionary theory suggests there should be a maximum size limit for stars at around 1500 solar radii. Our new champion apparently didn't get that memo. If you're loving this cosmic journey through the biggest things out there, do me a solid and smash that like button. Trust me, we're just getting warmed up here. By the end of this video, stars are going to seem tiny. When galaxies go absolutely bananas. Speaking of things that shouldn't exist according to the rules, let's talk about galaxies. Neil deGrasse Tyson, in his book Origins, 14 Billion Years of Cosmic Evolution, describes how galaxies are like the cells of the universe. Each one is its own collection of hundreds of billions of stars. And just like cells come in different shapes and sizes, so do galaxies. But some galaxies took that go big or go home mentality way too seriously. For the longest time, I, C1101, was considered the undisputed heavyweight champion. This supergiant elliptical galaxy sits about 1.04 billion light years away from us in the constellation Virgo, right at the center of the Abel 2029 galaxy cluster. Its stellar halo extends out to about 2 million light years from its core, giving it a total diameter of approximately 4 million light years. If IC1101 were sitting where the Milky Way is, it would completely engulf the Andromeda galaxy at 2.5 million light years away, swallowing our entire local group of galaxies with room left over. The numbers get absurd quickly. IC1101 contains somewhere around 100 trillion stars. That's more stars than there are cells in roughly a thousand human bodies combined. At its center lurks one of the most massive black holes ever discovered, weighing in somewhere between 40 and 100 billion times the mass of our sun. This galaxy achieved its enormous size through cosmic cannibalism. 
Over billions of years, it has consumed and merged with countless smaller galaxies that wandered too close. Charles Liu's work on colliding galaxies shows us exactly how this process works. When galaxies merge, the stars themselves rarely collide because they're so far apart. Instead, the gravitational dance strips away gas and dust, the very ingredients needed to make new stars. That's why I, C1101, despite hosting 100 trillion stars, is what astronomers call a dead galaxy. It's barely making new stars anymore. The yellowish glow it emits comes from old, cooler stars slowly fading away. Blue galaxies are where the action is, packed with massive young stars being born. Yellow galaxies? Those are the cosmic nursing homes. But here's where the definition of largest gets really interesting, and this is where astronomers start arguing at conferences. In February 2022, researchers discovered Alcyoneus. This giant radio galaxy, when you include the plasma structures extending from either side, powered by jets from its central black hole, spans 16 million light years from end to end. That makes it about 230% longer than IC1101. The Great Debate. What counts as a galaxy? This sparked genuine debate. Some researchers argue that those radio lobes aren't really part of the galaxy itself. They're just ejected material from the black hole. By that logic, IC 1101's stellar component still makes it the largest. Other astronomers counter that since those lobes are generated by and extend from the galaxy, they absolutely count as part of the structure. It's like arguing whether a peacock's tail counts as part of the peacock. Alcyonius sits about 3 billion light years away. And here's what puzzles astronomers. The galaxy itself is relatively ordinary. It's not particularly massive or energetic compared to other radio galaxies. So why did it grow such monstrously huge radio lobes? One theory suggests it might be sitting inside a filament of the cosmic web, those vast structures of dark matter and gas that connect galaxy clusters. The lower density in these regions might have allowed the jets to expand further than usual. But honestly, we don't really know. Neil deGrasse Tyson has written extensively about how our definitions in astronomy sometimes struggle to keep up with our discoveries. In his essay, Onward to the Edge, he discusses how every time we think we've found the biggest or most distant thing, someone comes along and finds something even more extreme. The universe apparently loves to humble us. The structure that shouldn't exist. This is where things get properly weird. Everything I've told you so far, as mind-blowing as it is, actually fits within our understanding of how the universe works. But there's something out there that's so incomprehensibly massive that it violates one of the fundamental principles of cosmology. Meet the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. The cosmological principle, which is basically the foundation of modern cosmology, states that when you zoom out far enough, the universe should look smooth and uniform in all directions. There can be some clumps and voids, sure, but on the largest scales, things should average out. There's even a theoretical limit called the end of greatness that suggests cosmic structures shouldn't exceed about 100 megaparsecs, or roughly 326 million light years across. The universe simply hasn't had enough time since the Big Bang for gravity to pull together structures larger than that. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is somewhere between 10 and 15 billion light years across. That's about 10 to 16% of the entire observable universe, making every other cosmic structure look microscopic by comparison. This monster was discovered in 2013 by a team led by Istvan Horvath, John Hakila, and Jolt Bagoli. They weren't looking for it directly. They were studying gamma ray bursts, the most powerful explosions in the universe that occur when massive stars explode as supernova or when neutron stars collide. These bursts are so bright that we can detect them from billions of light years away. The researchers noticed a weird concentration of these bursts 
clustered in a specific region of the sky, around the constellations Hercules and Corona Borealis. Charles Liu's work on the star formation history of the universe helps us understand why this matters. Gamma ray bursts come from the deaths of massive stars, and massive stars only form where there's a lot of matter concentrated together. A clustering of gamma ray bursts tells you there's a massive structure there, full of galaxies and star-forming regions. The wall got its name from Jondrick Valdez, a Filipino teenager with dreams of becoming an astronomer, who read about the discovery and added the name to its Wikipedia page. The name stuck, even though it's somewhat misleading. The structure actually spans from the constellation Botas all the way to Gemini, covering about an eighth of the entire sky. It's not really a wall in the traditional sense, but more like a filament or supercluster, a region where galaxies are concentrated far more densely than they should be. Why this breaks physics? Here's what has cosmologists losing sleep. According to the theory of cosmic inflation, which explains how the universe expanded exponentially in the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang, structures this large simply cannot exist. Inflation smoothed out the universe so efficiently that there shouldn't be enough time or gravitational pull to create something spanning 10 billion light years. The maximum size should be closer to a billion light years, maybe pushing to 2 billion with generous models. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is five to seven times larger than theoretical limits allow. It's like finding a human being who's 30 feet tall some scientists initially questioned whether it even exists, suggesting the clustering of gamma ray bursts might just be a statistical fluke. A study in 2016 argued the observed distribution was consistent with random chance. But follow-up studies in 2020, including work by the original discovery team analyzing more reliable data, found that this thing appears to be genuinely real. Neil deGrasse Tyson, in his essays and work with Charles Liu, emphasizes how the universe challenges our theories. He writes about how we're essentially looking at the universe through a keyhole, and every time we think we understand the rules, the universe shows us something that makes us rethink everything. The Hercules Corona Borealis. Great Wall is exactly that kind of discovery. The Race to Understand Cosmic Monsters. Recent research in 2025 has made the situation even more intriguing. The same team that discovered the Great Wall analyzed 542 gamma-ray bursts with known distances and found that the structure might actually extend from a redshift of 0.33 all the way to 2.43. In non-technical terms, that pushes the upper estimate to 15 billion light-years across and some parts of it are closer to Earth than previously thought. John Hakala from the University of Alabama in Huntsville, one of the lead researchers, has said that the jury is still out on what it all means for our understanding of the universe. There's a proposed European Space Agency mission called Theseus, the transient high energy sky and early universe surveyor that might finally give us the data we need to map the full extent of this structure. Until then, we're making educated guesses based on explosions happening billions of years ago in galaxies we can barely detect. Charles Liu's perspective, drawn from decades of studying galaxy evolution and large-scale structures through the Cosmos Project, reminds us that we're witnessing cosmic history. When we look at the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, we're seeing gamma-ray bursts from massive stars that exploded when the universe was much younger that light has been traveling for billions of years to reach us. Those stars are long dead, their remnants scattered across space, but their final brilliant explosions are only reaching our telescopes now. If you've made it this far, you're officially a cosmic scale expert. Hit that like button one more time because this information deserves to spread. And these are the kinds of mysteries that remind us how much we still don't know about the universe we live in. What this all means for us. So where does this leave us? Floating on a tiny rocky planet, orbiting an average sized star in a pretty typical spiral galaxy, which is part of a relatively small supercluster 
in a universe containing structures so vast that they violate our theoretical models. When Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about having a cosmic perspective, this is exactly what he means. In his essay, The Greatest Story Ever Told, he describes how all of our body's atoms are traceable to the Big Bang and to the nuclear furnaces inside massive stars. We are literally made of star stuff, and those massive stars that exploded as supernovae billions of years ago created the heavy elements that make up our bodies. The largest structures in the universe tell us something profound about how the cosmos evolved. They show us the limits of what gravity can accomplish over cosmic time. They reveal the intricate dance between matter, energy, dark matter, and dark energy that has shaped everything we see. The fact that Stevenson 2-18 might exceed the theoretical size limit for stars, or that the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall violates the cosmological principle, doesn't mean our physics is wrong. It means it's incomplete. These discoveries point us toward new physics, new understanding, new questions we hadn't even thought to ask yet. The humbling truth about scale. Here's something that really puts it all in perspective. The observable universe is about 93 billion light years in diameter. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall takes up about 10 to 16% of that. But the observable universe is just the part we can see, limited by the speed of light and the age of the universe. The actual universe, it's probably vastly larger, possibly infinite. Every structure I've talked about in this video is contained within our observable bubble of the cosmos. Beyond that bubble, there could be structures even larger that we'll never be able to see because their light hasn't reached us yet. Dark energy, that mysterious force making up about 70% of the universe, is pushing everything apart faster and faster. Eventually, galaxies beyond our local group will recede so quickly that their light will be redshifted, completely out of existence from our perspective. Charles Liu often notes that galaxies are to the universe what cells are to the human body, each one complex, diverse, and essential to the larger structure. But unlike cells, which are roughly the same size, galaxies range from dwarf galaxies with just a few billion stars to behemoths like IC1101 with 100 trillion stars. This diversity tells us that the universe is still young, still evolving, still changing. As Liu describes in his teaching philosophy, having this cosmic perspective can help alleviate the existential anxiety of human existence. When you consider the 10 billion year span of the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, or the fact that Stevenson 2-18 could contain 10 billion suns, your bad day really doesn't seem like such a big deal anymore. The cosmic pathway exhibit Liu helped develop at the Hayden Planetarium stretches over a football field in length, yet all of human history falls within the width of one human hair on that scale. It shrinks your head in the best possible way. If this video made you feel appropriately tiny and insignificant in the best possible way, if you're sitting there thinking about how ridiculous it is that Stevenson 2-18 exists, or that the Great Wall violates physics, then you need to subscribe to this channel right now. We're just getting started exploring the weirdest, largest, and most mind-blowing things in the universe. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you don't miss the next video, and drop a comment telling me which of these cosmic monsters blew your mind the most. Was it the star that could eat Saturn? The galaxy with a 16 million light year wingspan? or the structure that's too big to exist? Thanks for watching, and remember, every time you look up at the night sky, you're looking at a universe filled with monsters that make everything we know seem impossibly small. And that's exactly how it should be.